We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Helena, Montana, and the Frontier Conference as we get to visit with the head coach of the Carroll Saints, the perennial power Carroll Saints with Coach Troy Purcell in his sixth season heading into that coach. Uh, last year, 7-3, and three, and I'd like to talk a little bit about 2023. A strong season. The last game of the season with Montana Tech proved to be pretty much a de facto playoff game. Uh, and Tech won that game. But, uh, again, a good season in 23. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, the uh, season we've been starting out pretty uh, slow, you know, in the first five years and our four years, I guess, and finishing strong. And so then I made an emphasis last year to start fast and uh, figuring we're going to finish strong. <clears throat> and then we uh, didn't finish as strong as we'd like. And, uh, again, and 5-0 uh, and oh on the road, and then we lose uh, three games at home, you know, on that final stretch to three, you know, nationally ranked playoff teams. Uh, that just kind of shows you what the Frontier Conference is about and the level of, of, of play here in the Frontier Conference. But, yeah, kind of, you know, disappointed. You know, you win any of one of those last ones, you're 8-2 and two and you host a game, and uh, just, you know, disappointing on that part of it. Seven to three, still a good year. We're ranked number six at some, you know, one time. Six and all, you know, starting out the season, beating, you know, St. Thomas and beating, you know, a thriller down at Rocky and, you know, nationally ranked teams along the way. And so, um, but it is what it is. And that's that season. And that one's in the past. And now we're looking forward to 2024. I understand. And we mentioned the Frontier Conference, Coach. It, it looked a little different last year. It's going to look a little bit different this year with Simpson as, as one of the scheduling partners, full, full member in 2025. And then the whole thing will look different uh, the next year coming up. Talk about the conference, as you mentioned. It's a, it's a strong conference. Yeah, definitely. This, especially coming up this next this this season coming up before uh, you know we divide where everybody's playing each other. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it's unbelievable. This this Frontier Conference. There's no off weeks. There's no bye weeks. Uh, there's you better prepare for everybody because anybody at any time can beat somebody in this conference. And it's very evident. You watch the you know well record or you know this team shouldn't beat this team and they do <laughs> you know especially those games where you got to play twice and we're fortunate this year when we have to play one opponent twice just like last year like everybody in the conference when you had to play them you know three different opponents you know twice during a year yeah. it's it's hard and we have eat each other up here in the frontier conference and nobody would have that you know eight and two record or seven or eight and one or nine and one uh because everybody's beating up each other all the time and so uh, this will help clean some stuff up. It did last year, kind of separate uh, where you're not at to play everybody. You have some non-conference and other teams coming in with Arizona Christian, you know, from just that last year. Uh, so, yeah, so it, uh, it's exciting. It's exciting to be in the Frontier Conference. And, and we know how to play. And, you know, at, um, you know College of Idaho uh, showed well, uh, making it all the way to the, you know, semifinals last year. And what a very, very good team that was. Coach, news has come out this week of the the Dewar Scholarship uh, nominees from the different conferences, both men's and women's, and it's a, it's a big honor. And I wanted to mention that because one of your players was uh, recognized from the Frontier Conference in Spencer Berger, uh, near four point uh, GPA right now, and he, he's it's 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 a major or a, an emphasis of study that you don't see all the time in in athletics he's, he's studying biochemistry and molecular biology so coach from a student athlete perspective he's representing the saints well yeah man these these kids here it's amazing uh spencer's done a great job and it, being a college you know uh, athlete and having a workload like that just shows you what kind of mentality that young man has and his work ethic. Uh, Cause you know, it's a, it's quite a commitment in the football part and then also in the classroom and, and my hat's off to him and he's done an exceptional job and, and uh, he's the very deserving of, of this nomination. You mentioned coach that last year, if that's done seven and three, that's in the past. Let's look ahead to 2024 and, and we start with offense and a great place to start. Jack Perka, he has, done a, an admirable job leading your team and and he seems to be somebody that's just a, a versatile quarterback and can do whatever you ask him to do start with him and tell us a little about about your offense yeah you know he's an exciting young man to watch he places the ball and anticipates the receiver coming out of the breaks uh, better than any person i've ever been around uh he started as a, you know the third year is uh third game after the third game his freshman year and never looked back 
Uh, he's done an exceptional job off the field, on the field, and just an outstanding leader. Um, his uh, ability, you know, with the RPO game, you know, we try to, you know, some quarterbacks have the feet to get you out of situations, and he can do that. But his strength is uh, the RPO game and getting us out of uh, uh, spots where we can gain a guy with the RPO pass. So uh, exciting to see him. Exciting to see him play this, um, you know, his senior year. Got a lot of good players around him. Uh, offensive linemen, you know, coming back, you know, that's kind of where it all starts on the offensive side. And you got Jaden Lamb as a, as a center and uh, Tim Seller. So we've got two linemen coming back. Um, and then we got three youngins coming in that uh, had a great spring practice and Andrew Devine, Wyatt Sanford and, uh, and uh, Ben Larson. So those guys are, you know, uh, excited to get on the field. Has to have a lot of game experience, but very, very talented uh, group of, uh, of linemen there. Um, at the tight end position, you got Carson Ochoa. Carson was a uh, all-conference player last year, great blocker, great receiving tight end. Uh, so it's exciting to have him back with Ryan Rickman and a newcomer coming up in, and Matt Golick out of Lewiston, Montana. Um, he's an outstanding, tough individual also. Excited to see him playing some live reps. <clears throat> um, our receivers, Chris Colchin is back. Uh, he's probably still our fastest kid on this team, very explosive. Um, a playmaker. Uh, we added some guys to it. There's some young talent uh, with Gavin Vandenacre out of Townsend, Montana, and then uh, Lincoln Holmes out of Utah. Uh, so those three are probably the starters I can see right now. Uh, Colin Stoddard, uh, Connor Sullivan, uh, Garrett Stone, uh, Sam Murphy, Clint Belcher. Uh, all those guys are going to be spinning in there and, and uh, making it happen. So again, besides Chris having a lot of experience, the other guys don't have a lot, but they have a lot of athletic talent. Uh, we won't lose a person in that room, I think, for two years or, wow. you know, there's no graduate. They're young, but they're, they're very, very talented. Um, running back position, you, uh, we had a great spring coming in with Black Max and Lehman, kind of being the leader coming out of that um, with uh, 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 Cormac Ben as another running back. He'll be a senior this year coming up. I think he has two more years. I don't know. I think we're out of COVID world, so I don't know how many more. <laughs> You know, so uh, him and then J Jake Jeske and A.J. LaFerge. Um, and then those guys are uh, had an outstanding spring. Uh, we did bring some transfer guys in that happened to hit uh, with Asher Croy out of University of Montana. He's got a couple seasons left. you got A. Xavier Ford out of uh, Southern California down there. Uh, he's got a couple seasons left. And then uh, we got a running back coming in, uh, Gatorade Player of the Year out of BK, uh, Peter um, Minnerk. Uh, and uh, he's an outstanding young running back, too. So that room filled up a little bit. So it's going to be a great competition. Um, you know, that's where you want it uh, with competitive people doing competitive things. And and um, so we'll see how it all gels out. It sounds like and as you, you talked about the fact that you, you may have those players for a while and the depth that you're talking about there, too. I mean, that that has to be exciting. We're visiting now with Coach Troy Purcell from Carroll here on Midwest Sportsnet, where we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And I encourage you, please take some time and subscribe to the channel. We would appreciate that greatly. On the defensive side of the ball, start with the line. Garrett Warden comes back to, to lead the way there for you and among other players that are coming back. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, Garrett was back and forth a little bit, um, but I'm just excited to see his face back in that weight room and, and getting things done and having one more season with him in the locker room and on the field. He's just an outstanding young young man. I guess he's old now. Jeez, he's been doing this for <laughs> forever. Um, but, uh, yeah, our D-line is going to be salty again. You know, we've always had uh, very fortunate to have very, very uh, – our strength has pretty much been the D-line, uh, I think, the last five years, um, you know, going on number six, um, you know, just with the talent there. And when you got good D and old line, you're going to be successful. Uh, so you got uh, Hunter Peck also is uh, coming back because he'll be a senior this year. you got um, Rocky Shields. He's a newcomer out of Wazoo. Uh, we picked him up in December, so he's been with us, big 6'4", about 285-pound nose guard. So we get him for four years, so that's going to be exciting. Um, and Denavion Ali, uh, going to be have a great year for Saguaro, uh, Mason Harwood. So all those guys are kind of fitting into those spots of, uh, uh, you know, continuing the tradition of the creatures there on um, having a great, uh, uh, you know, D-line and great rotation with that. 
uh, linebacker position. You got uh, Jacob Swetland from uh, uh, Hellgate. You got Ben Melhoff. You got uh, you know Jet Boyce uh, coming in there fighting for those positions. Um, we did have some newcomers come into that inside linebacker spot with Eli Aby from the University of uh, of Montana, and then. Uh, um, and then, uh, or Montana State University, sorry for the Bobcats, I don't want to insult anybody. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, then one from, um, um, and then went from Boise State University and Brett Tomlinson. And so those two newcomers, they got two years left. Uh, so they got some experience also at a very high level. So it's going to be a lot of competition again, you know, with, uh, in, in that interior group. We got another, and then Gage Norsland from uh, in Lewiston, Montana. Again, those Lewiston boys up there were pretty good. We got four of them that are outstanding young athletes here. Um, so excited to see those guys. They're outside backers. Uh, you got Cam Pruitt, and you got uh, Gunnar Julio with maybe Gage Norsland out there. Also uh, excited to see that uh, at the rock position. Again, you got Connor Kernow, Ben Melhoff. You got uh, Henry Gross. Uh, had an outstanding uh, spring coming in. Uh, so those front seven are salty. They're going to be a they're going to be a good group once it all gels out. And then uh, the safety position where we had to fill a couple gaps there. Um, you know, with uh, you know the Tud Smith leaving, Caden Gardner leaving, and and degree. So uh, we got Bodie Smith out of Whitefish, Montana, is coming in very athletic, two sport athlete. Uh, Braden Orlandi, uh, you know, just a uh, unbelievable field or boundary safety. He'll come up and hit you, athletic as I'll get up. And then Devron Brewer, Anthony Cooper. You know, you got some guys there. Uh, depends on what we're seeing on if we're going to get thicker uh, with them or for you know we need to go a lighter person because of uh, uh, what they're doing offensively. Um, corner position, you got Dax Graham out of Dillon, Montana, Isaiah, 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 Elijah Larson, um, and then uh, those two are returning starters coming back. Um, and then we got Mason Green, you know, filling that role, Johnny Amens. And then uh, we got some newcomers coming in with Jamari and uh, um, Nemechek. Gosh dang, those two guys. One guy's from Houston, one guy's from uh Oregon so it's going to be exciting to see those guys come in and press uh you know those corners in their position and and again the competition is going to be you know where we want it to be and be able to put um where a person just automatically doesn't have the position sealed up you know you're going to have to go out and earn it each day because there's no such thing as staying the same either you're getting better or getting worse because somebody else is getting better and getting and worse also. So there's no such thing as, you know, the depth chart and, and staying the same. So uh, uh, astounding me on defense. Uh, some young guys on the defensive secondary at the safety position and some older guys where you need them also. So it's a nice mix of uh, athletic talent. Coach, you, you mentioned both Montana and Montana State too, and, and it seems like you've done a, a fantastic job of taking care of recruiting in-state, but also if uh, there are players that uh, are not – seeing maybe what they want to see at the D1 level, they're finding what they can find and, and uh, it, right there at Carroll. Yeah, definitely. You know, and that's, uh, um, that just, you know, shows well. When, when we break ties with a kid, you know, out of Montana or not, um, and having that relationship and always watching them and everything, then sometimes it kicks back. We picked up Logan Gilliard at one time and Connor Quick at one time. And um, uh, now we picked up, like I said, Eli Avey, who's from Laurel, Montana. Asher Croy was in Bozeman, Montana. Uh, so those are two guys that you know, came in. We picked up uh, Hogan Carmichael also. He wasn't, you know, kind of in that phase. But he's a bat, He's a quarterback. He was at Idaho that came in uh, early. So that's another transfer kid that we got. Um, and then, uh, but yes, yeah, so keeping those relationships and, you know, wishing them the best. But if it ever comes back to where they need an opportunity uh, to continue their football and continue their education that we're still available. Coach, we mentioned Spencer, Spencer Berger a little bit earlier. Let's talk about what he's done, doing for you on the field of play now. So talked about his athlete, or excuse me, academic prowess. Uh, last season, extra points, made them all, 28 of 28, 7 for 14 field goals. A couple of those, though, were uh, attempts from beyond 50 yards. So uh, talk about the special teams, and, and it starts with Berger. Yeah, no, uh, Spencer's done a great job, outstanding. He was getting great player, or national player of the year at one time uh, when we beat uh, uh, Eastern Oregon down there. I think he beat three or four and a game winner right at the end as a freshman. Uh, so he's got, you know, he's he's uh, he's smooth, you know what I mean? Nothing gets to him. 
And uh, and so, yeah, so he'll be doing – right now he'll be doing the punting also, but we do have a kid named Jack Thompson that came in, uh, that transfer student uh, that is also a punter. So we'll see how that all gels out. And then he's got some more competition with Nick Klaus. Um, but, yeah, what, it, what it's a great room to have, you know, when you have – you know, people in there that can, uh, you know, push each other. So uh, excited to see him play. Excited to see him get him on this new turf out here and nobody's going to be slipping and nobody, you know, on, on uh, when you get a shank one up into the, uh, uh, <laughs> up into the bleacher. It wasn't because of the field. Man. So let's not blame it on that anymore. <laughs> not that he does. You know what I mean? I just giving them a hard time. Okay, I was I was wondering. It sounded like a you know an experience that uh, you'd witnessed. So I'm just curious. <laughs> Coach, the season starts on a Saturday, September 7th. The uh, last team you played last year, Montana Tech, you get them again to open the season. Season bookends, by the way, uh, with Montana Tech. The first one out of conference, and you get three straight games at home. Uh, that's a, a good way to start the season, I would imagine. Second game, a conference game against Rocky Mountain. The third game with Simpson, although they will be part of the conference portion of the schedule, it's a conference uh, scheduling alliance, I guess, at this point for Simpson coming into the conference officially in 2025. But you get to see the boys from California there on the 21st, go on the road for the first time, and you have to go all the way to Glendale, Arizona for that one. First trip to Arizona Christian, that's on September 28th. Tell us a little bit about your schedule. Yeah, no, it's uh, we actually, you know, out of the 10 games, we play six, uh, six at home and, and four on the road. And so, I've never had that in 35 years of coaching this game where you have six and, and four. So excited to see that, you know, it's good for our fans. They're all five out of six games are at home. Um, you know, the first five out of six games are at home. So again, that start fast mentality, we need to show well, we usually play a pretty dang well in Nelson stadium. Uh, we just got to make sure, you know, we, we can continue that trend. Um, yeah. So you got one plane ride to Arizona Christian, you got one bus ride to, College of Idaho, the only two overnight trips, and then get up and play, you know, leave here and go play uh, Montana Tech and then Montana Western the morning of. So um, it was probably the best schedule I've ever been a part of. And so we just got to make sure we're doing things right with this type, type of schedule. All right, Coach. Well, we will follow the Saints this season as we do, and, and uh, success to you all over the course of this season. Coach Troy Purcell from Carroll, thank you so much, sir, for taking time with us as we preview 2024. And, and again, we're going to follow you along. Well, I appreciate it. and appreciate the, the time and the, a little bit of, you know, reach out to Carroll College football and the tradition here. And, and again, just proud of our coaching staff and players of uh, continuing the excellence here at Carroll College. <laughs>